There we go. All right. So today we are here to talk about how to plan your social media. Now we only have about, I only talk for about 40, 45 minutes and there's questions. I, I keep the chat open so I can uh, really engage with that. And so this is more of an overview, but I'm going to be talking about what tools we use, not only for our own social media, but also our clients, um, why those tools could be really helpful. And then we're also going to talk about if you do outsource or hire someone for your social media, what kind of things to look for. Okay. So a little bit about me for those who haven't attended one of my webinars before, you don't know me very well. Uh, here's a bit of info. So my name is Samantha Gernhardt. I say Sam. I don't have a preference, but I do say Sam a lot. We moved from British Columbia to Ontario in early March 2020. So we've been now in Brantford for two years. We moved just before the pandemic, just before the kids were in school for two weeks. Our stuff for our house got delivered March 7th, March 8th. 12th was our first night here. And then what days later, uh, everything changed. The only perk was that I didn't have to rush to unpack because nobody was coming over. <laughs> I've been in business for almost 17 years. This coming summer will be my 17th year in business. I started this business right after high school, the summer after high school. Um, which I graduated in 2005. And that summer, that August, I started my business. Oh, sorry, I had to cough there. <clears throat> we were sick there for a couple of weeks in April. So I still have a little bit of a, a tickle. Um, so if you see me grabbing something, that is why. <clears throat> sorry. Um, so when I describe to people what I do or what we offer, I talk about marketing, web, and graphics. And those are our three categories. My background education is in marketing management and web development. So I'm really nerdy. I code websites. I am a developer. I'm a busy mom to three children. My oldest is 10. So I have a double digits child, which I don't know how I feel about that. I think it just tells me how old I am. <laughs> and uh, my youngest is in JK and we have one in between. And I love teaching and sharing the knowledge, hence these free webinars. I've done a free one in December, January, February, March, and now April. We're gonna be picking them back up in the fall. I'm not gonna do one um, for May and June and the summer. Um, and I also was teaching at Conestoga this semester. We just wrapped up. I was teaching three web development courses. And I also teach still with the college in our previous community. And I also do webinars with other organizations like the BRC, Brantford Resource Center, and the Laurier Women's Entrepreneurship Center. That's a little bit about me. Hopefully that fills in some blanks. All right, so we are a small group today, so you can definitely keep your video on. That is completely up to you. Sometimes when really large groups show up, then I'm like, okay, I don't think the interest is gonna work <laughs> with everyone's videos and my video and sharing my screen. But today we do have a small group. So definitely um, is up to you if you want to leave your video on or not. Definitely um, we'll stay mute uh, for now while I'm chatting, but utilize the chat. Anytime, comments, questions, throw them in the chat, please, because I keep it open so I can um, pull it up and refer to it, really engage throughout if I can. So in the chat, this is where I get to know you a bit more. Um, if you're comfortable, this is not mandatory. This is completely up to you, but this helps me see where you're currently at with your social media and why you took the, or signed up for this free webinar. So question one is, do you currently manage your social media or um, do you have someone managing it for you? Um, what are your, some social media tools you're currently using if you are? And feel free to put your social media links in there. I would love to connect with you and maybe others would want to connect too. And what is your biggest struggle with social media right now? So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to put that in the chat. And it just helps me get to know you a bit better of where you're currently at. And that way, if there is certain struggles 
um, that I do cover, that's great. And if not, um, we can still touch on it. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to put that in the chat. Do you currently manage your social media or does someone manage it for you? What social media tools are you currently using? If you are, um, feel free to put your social media links in there or usernames. And then what is your biggest struggle with social media right now? I'll give you all a moment to put that in there. There we go. <laughs> Got that I put it on mute so I could clear my throat. <laughs> so yeah, throw that in the chat. It just helps me get to know you and where you're currently at. So I will continue on, but continue to put that in there because I will pull it up. There we go. Okay, let's move on, but keep throwing that in there. I love my stats. <laughs> if you can take it in my webinars before, you know that I'll throw these stats in. I have to move my chat over just ever so slightly. But on an average of 2.4 hours a day is spent on social media networks and messaging. I want to say probably since the pandemic, that's probably even higher. So we're spending a couple of hours of our time a day on our social media networks, messaging, Sounds about right. So first let's talk about how can social media benefit you? Maybe you don't have social media yet. Um, maybe you're not really utilizing it yet. Um, so let's talk about a bit about why it is important. So there are many ways you can find social media valuable to you, whether it's an organization, nonprofit, maybe just put on events. Um, a business, all sorts. So as a marketing platform with little to no cost, social media can promote your website, brand, products, or services, events, a blog. As an engagement or support tool, social media can help you communicate and interact with your customers both broadly, broadly and individually. For customer research, social media can give you insights into your visitors' behaviors interests and activities. For content management, social media can curate and publish your content. So there is obviously more than one social media platform. Uh, popular ones would be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and so on. Am I on all of these? No. Um, at one point, I was on many of them a couple of years ago. I had Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, um, all for the business. <clears throat> but I just couldn't be on all of them. And so now I focus on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I have Pinterest, but it's more for personal when I'm looking for recipes <laughs> and camping ideas. Uh, I do have YouTube, but I'm not fully... Uh, you know, I don't post on it as much as I would like to. I removed Twitter for myself. We don't need to be on all of them. And I recall at one point, we all thought we had to. We all needed all this stuff. But not all of these will be applicable to every single type of business, every single type of um, organization or event. So just choose the ones <clears throat> you feel would be best. But do we need to be on all of them? No. I, even myself or my business, am not on all of them. I want to focus my time on the ones that I think is the best solution and uh, not spread myself too thin by having them all. So some social media tool must-haves. Now, when you start Googling social media tools or must-have social media tools, oh gosh, there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And it's almost like a black hole you start researching and 
the list is insane. The list I was finding would be like 25 top things. I'm like, 25, why 25? <laughs> like, no. Um, so I wanted to put this, put this together in a way where um, it is, it's simplified. So Canva. Canva is pretty much any nonprofit or business tool. It's not just for social media. On Canva, you can make your you know, presentations. <clears throat> you can make your social media posts, business cards, brochures, the list goes on. It is huge. And I highly recommend the pro version. So I'm not doing the free version for myself. I'm just one up from there so that I can use the branding kit and uh, you know, I get all those pro stock photos. Um, I don't have the account where I could share it with my team. So I just share my login. That way I'm not having to upgrade again to share it with my team. So if I do share stuff with my team, which I do, I just provide the login that I have. Um, but Canva is a must have, not only a social media tool, but just a tool for your everyday business, not just for social media, lots of marketing stuff. Oh gosh, it's never ending. And they have a lot of training with it too. So if you're not savvy in Photoshop or you don't want to pay for Photoshop or those kind of really advanced um, photo editing and creation tools, Canva is amazing. And definitely upgrade just to the pro version because it is worth every penny for it. What's a scheduling tool? This will make your life easier when you don't have to go, oh gosh, I forgot to post that. And there's a lot of tools for this too. So those lists that I was mentioning about how it's like 25 and 30 things you need for social media, it would cover a lot of these different scheduling tools. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Hootsuite, Later, um, Sprout Social, Meet Edgar, Plan Only, the list goes on. We can also schedule within our Facebook business manager. Um, we can... Canva, the pro account actually has a bit of a calendar area. I have not utilized that myself yet. Um, what else? It, so I'm using later. So I use Canva every day, not only for social media, but for marketing, you know, design stuff. Um, and scheduling, I'm using later for myself and my own um, accounts for clarity. But there is many options with it. And really will come down to some things of like, portability, ease to use, but this allows me to schedule my stuff so that I don't forget. Um, for example, life stuff happens. In April, I had my six-year-old daughter in and out of the hospital more than once. In between that, we all got really sick. And by scheduling, I didn't have to worry about it, not only for myself, but also for the clients that we help them with their social media. So scheduling really does help when it comes to a busy week, so you don't forget. And there are all sorts of different tools for scheduling your social media. You can do it right from Facebook, like I said. Link in bio, and this has to do with Instagram specifically. I'm just going to get the chat open here. Um, which I can share my screen. But if you go to different people's Instagram accounts, you'll we only have the link in bio. Um, so when people say, oh, in the post, go to their link in bio, that means you have to go to their profile on Instagram, click the one link that we have on our profile, and it will take you somewhere. So it only allows us the one link. So most people just put it to their website. But then what if you share a blog post on your Instagram and you just go link in bio? Well, they have to then go to that link, which just takes them to your homepage and then they have to find that blog post. So I really do recommend using some sort of link in bio um, functionality. And for me, I'm using Linktree and I actually have a video about it on my Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, I posted it some time ago. There are other options. Later has its own link in bio functionality, but I was already on Linktree at that time. Or you can also even make a page on your website that has that same functionality. And the functionality is that when someone clicks on my link in bio on my Instagram, the link tree allows me to have a whole bunch of different links where I can send them to my site, I can send them to my recent blog posts, I can send them to my Zoom registration for this webinar, 
That way I have a whole list of places I can send them to instead of just sending them to my homepage. So if any of you go to my um, Instagram account, Clarity Designs CA, and you go to my actual profile um, where it has the, the link tree, which is that sort of link in bio. If you click that, you'll see um, all the different places I could send you to. So definitely some sort of functionality with that. And there are different programs, just like I mentioned. Um, one perk to having a page like that on your website is that you're getting all those website visits and clicks to your actual site. But right now, mine all go to the link tree. And then if they come to my site, then it counts um, as a website visit. So that is an option that you can just make a page on your site um, with all those different links but it just helps with Instagram because we only have one place to put our, a link in our profile, which is the link in bio. So if you have something like that with that tool, then you can send them to a whole bunch of different places. And I can always pull that up to show you mine after. So Bitly is um, a program that helps you shorten URLs. So times, sometimes we'll see uh, a shorter URL and it's like, you know, different characters or, it's not really words, um, that would be bit.ly. And so say if the URL that you want to share on your Facebook post is really long, you can use bit.ly to shorten that URL. It will still go to the same place that you want it to go to, but um, bit.ly allows you to shorten those really long URLs. And you get some analytics with it. And then analytics. Now, when I say analytics, on this one here, I'm referring to Google Analytics, have it connected to your site. I know that's not quite social media, but having Google Analytics connected to your site will allow you to see if you're getting clicks to your website from your social media. Um, so it is definitely a must have tool in general. Um, a, have a website, B, have it connected to Google Analytics so that as you do some marketing social media posts, as an example, you should see spikes on your website. So definitely analytics is a huge part. And then insights. So insights is what Facebook and Instagram call their stats or their analytics. And you don't want to just post and walk away. You definitely want to take a look, um, um, you know, a month later to be like, how did April do? Um, was there any posts that did really well? Why? Is there any post that didn't get any engagement? Why? You know, that way you can cut out the stuff that isn't getting a lot of engagement or views and maybe put a little bit more into the ones that are. So by looking at your insights, your stats, your analytics when it comes to your website, your email newsletters that you send out, your social media, all of it, it allow you to see what is working and what is not working. And for Kim, I, the meeting is also recorded. Um, so if you did miss anything, um, the recording will also be sent out. Um, I did talk, yeah, these are some special tools that are a must have and, and you didn't miss, miss too much. <laughs> so at minimum, I would say for people, especially if they're managing their own social media, Canva and some sort of scheduling tool. I just have to clear my throat with one moment. Like I said, in April, we were very sick and it was this really bad cough cold. Anyone who follows me would, would have seen that we were sick and my daughter was in the hospital. It was not fun. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm glad April's almost over. Um, so Canva and scheduling. So scheduling I use later, but you can schedule through your Facebook business manager. Um, there's plan only, there's me, Edgar. There's so many I've come across and almost, almost each time I ask someone what they're using, they'll mention a different program that I've, I haven't used or I haven't even heard of. So when it comes to scheduling, there is a lot of different tools. So I'm just gonna pull up the chat here and just take a peek at what we've got in here so far. So I started off with, um, you know, put it in the chat that if you are, are you currently managing your social media or do you have someone managing your social media? For those who haven't answered, you can still put that in. Um, the other question for the chat was, what tools are you currently using? for your social media if you are. And the other one was, what's your biggest struggle right now with social media? And then if you feel comfortable, you can put your social media handles in the chat so that I can make sure to follow you later or other attendees. 
So we have people saying, um, co-manage um, some client stuff, have a fair bit amount of um, experience, Facebook and Instagram, a few apps, create videos, a struggle finding fresh content. Oh yes, yes, the ideas. Um, someone said they're part of a team that manages social media. I uh, use Canva and other apps. Biggest struggle is getting, is a new team getting organized. And then manage it myself, use Canva and Meta for business scheduling. So that, yeah, it used to be called the you know, Facebook business manager. And feel free to follow other people who are putting them in there. Uh, franchise owner of multiple offices, manage and post our social media. And we had, what is your favorite one? I'm assuming that would be to the different social media profiles we can have. Um, I would probably say Facebook. I've been on Facebook longer than Instagram. I did not get on the bandwagon early on on Instagram. If I had, I would have thousands and thousands and thousands of followers by now because I think I, I had made an account um, when it first came out. My son was a baby still at that point. He's 10 now. I just never followed through with it. <laughs> so I was like, could you imagine if I had stayed on it? How many followers I'd have now? <laughs> I didn't really get active on Instagram until we were leaving Burns Lake, which is in Northern BC. And I was going to Invermere, which is a bit of a bigger community. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to be, you know, running my business there, I need to have the right social media. At that point, I'd kind of closed a lot of my social media, living in a really small community. Um, so probably about like 2017 is when I got on Instagram and really had to start utilizing it for my business because I was moving to a bigger town. So I, I'm probably yeah, my, my go-to and the one I'm most comfortable on, the one I like the most is Facebook. But I know I need to have Instagram. I don't have a choice and LinkedIn for my type of business. Uh, for analytics, do you use different tools for each component? Is there a main one that can show everything? Probably yes, um, definitely yes. There's, um, there's so many, that's the thing, there's so many scheduling and analytics tools and programs. I will definitely post some um, blog post links when I do the replay send out because there is so much. Like I said, it's like a black hole. <laughs> uh, once you start Googling it, you're like, oh gosh, this is never ending. Um, but a lot of them are not free. So if you do want free, then yes, like for me, I will check MailChimp for my analytics of my email newsletters I send out. I will check my Google analytics for my website. And then I hop into Instagram insights and Facebook insights. And yes, that's four separate places, but to take a peek at them here and there, it doesn't take too much time. Um, but yes, there's definitely programs that you can connect a lot of that together to see it all in one place, but usually those do come at a price. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So what to look for in a tool? Uh, like make sure it's the right fit. <clears throat> it should save you time. That is the whole point of these tools. It should save you time. Just give me one moment. It should help increase brand awareness. It should be easy to use. And so there's some people when it, even when it comes to email newsletters that they don't like MailChimp because they don't find it easy to use. And there's some people that really love MailChimp because it is really easy to use. Um, I can say the thing about constant contact. Um, I'm more familiar with MailChimp. I still use constant contact with my clients. Um, I, sometimes I still have to Google stuff because it's not as easy to use, I find, right? So what's easy to use for you? Just because other people say it's easy to use doesn't mean it's going to be easy to use for you should be affordable, especially if you are a nonprofit or you're just starting the business. Um, you don't want to potentially put out all that money for these different tools and stuff. So maybe look at what is free to low cost to start. And it helps keep you organized and it helps us plan ahead and be strategic about where, what we're posting and keep us organized. If it doesn't meet those things, don't use it. But those are some things to look for when you are looking for a tool to use in your social media, your marketing, or your business in general. So planning our content. 
this is where people get a lot of held up with of like, well, what am I supposed to post? Not the next step would definitely be putting those posts together, but how do we even get those ideas? <clears throat> so first, if you're on Pinterest, they will have um, things like this on the right hand side where it gives you some ideas, some inspiration of what you could post for the next 24 days. But these are just ideas. So like inspirational quotes, um, a blog post. So uh, we do do a, a monthly blog post so that, <clears throat> that would be incorporated into my monthly social media. A quick tip, sorry. Um, webinars training. So these are really awesome. And there is hundreds of them on Pinterest. So if you have Pinterest, you can just even create a board that as you see these type of images on Pinterest, you can save them. So that way when you are stuck or you need some filler posts, as I call them, you could take a look at this and be like, okay, do we have an announcement or do we have a printable freebie? Oh, do, can we change, turn one of our FAQs into a post? So Pinterest is great for these kind of images that you see on the screen on the right hand side. What I start with, with our own social media and clients is the previous month. So I'm gonna use my business as an example. Was there any projects we finished last month? Was there any events I went to last month? Was there, um, did we have a webinar last month that I could take a snippet of the recording and post and, and talk about? Um, did we get any new clients last month? Those kind of things. So I look at last month, what happened? What did we complete? What were we involved in? Can those be a post? Then the current month, what's happening this month? Okay, well, we have a webinar. We did our monthly blog post. We sent out an email newsletter. Those three right there could be turned into a post. Um, did any new clients come on board? Are we still trying to push for new clients? Or do we want to push a certain type of service, right? So I look at the current month. And then I also look at next month. What's happening next month that I may need to start promoting this month? Do, you know, an event, uh, a promo, uh, another webinar, um, you know, I take the summer off or I, I cut down my work during the summer. So I would start talking about that soon to let people know. So previous month, current month, and next month. That right there will possibly fill up a lot of your calendar. And then maybe you can use the Pinterest ideas for the in-betweens, inspirational quotes. We see those testimonials we see those a case study um short videos behind the scenes all these kind of things can be your in between after you look at the previous month the current month and the next month take a look at competitors um now find competitors that are doing their social media right <laughs> that's the first thing but are they doing anything are they posting about anything that could just be inspiration for you. Generate an idea of like, oh, I could do something similar, but like this, right? Not a copy and paste, but is there something that your competitors are doing that um, could really create some inspiration ideas for your own content? Now, this could be local competitors. This could be in your province, a um, couple of you know, cities over, or just even within Canada. They don't need to be like a local direct competitor. Like I said, it's also trying to find a competitor that's really knocking their social media out of the park, to use them as an example. So how many times a week do we post? I say about three to five, right? I have some clients right now. We actually have quite a few social media clients um, where they are on a five a post week, five posts a week um, package because they're really trying to push. Um, and then we have some who are on three posts a week just to stay con consistent and maintained. So on average, I say three, two, five. Do you need to post every single day? No. Do I? Sometimes. Um, <clears throat> but um, three is a good one just to stay in the middle. Um, so if you don't have too much going on and you don't need to fully push the business or that event or, you know, something really hard right now, that three is a good average number. And that way you could try out different days of the week. One week, it could be Monday. Wednesday, Friday, the next week could be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. That way you can see what days are also better, um, what times are also better. <clears throat> so the next would be create the posts, the content, hashtags, and Canva. 
So when we create content, not only for ourselves, but also for clients, we create them in Canva and then we open up the notes and we'll put the content in there. That way um, they have them for future use. And then I just copy and paste it into their scheduling or directly into their posts that day. But we actually design, we put together the content, whatever hashtags, links, all in Canva. We use Canva as also like our content creator, our calendar, um, all within Canva. So we create, um, we'll go in and like create an Instagram post. And so it shows up, you know, that first little box and then we'll just add um, more boxes or more images um, within that one. So it's almost like a folder of all of our social media for that month all together. I don't um, create them all separately. I go always show you my Canva just to show you. But um, that way you have all of, say, May posts together in one folder, I guess you could call it, in your Canva. And then you click on notes and that's where you can put your content and stuff. <clears throat> and then schedule the posts. Now, I don't suggest scheduling all of your content for like a whole month in one go because the pandemic has really shown us that things can change. So when I do schedule, I only will schedule for that week. That way, if something goes up, something happens, something changes that I need to change, I haven't scheduled a whole month. Um, the pandemic has really shown us that things can change on a dime and drastically. And there were people that definitely had a whole month's worth of social media scheduled. And when the pandemic changed everything, they had to go in and change all that or, or cancel it. Um, or they didn't and it still got posted when it wasn't applicable and it wasn't right to post that type of post anymore. Um, so definitely I would only schedule about one week at a time. Doesn't mean you can't design a couple weeks or a month ahead of time in Canva, but I would only schedule it about um, one week at a time, <clears throat> just in case. So 91% of all social media users access social media channels on mobile. We have the mobile in our hand all the time. <laughs> it's, it's glued to us. And uh, for, for you know, example, Instagram is meant for mobile. Facebook is mobile and, um, you know, on a computer or that kind of thing. But most people are accessing their social media accounts and profiles through their mobile device. For me, I'm, I'm probably almost 50, 50 because I work on my laptop. So I'll pop on that way, but, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I still use my, my, um, mobile. So then this is also a good tip of why your website needs to be mobile friendly, because we're already on this with our social media. We'll go to our LinkedIn. We'll go to our Instagram, our Facebook, everything. And we have access to it all through our mobile. So your website definitely needs to be mobile friendly too. That is really huge. So here's some tips. I'm just seeing that time here. Okay. I just want to go over some tips of how to, how could you grow your Facebook and Instagram following? So you can like photos within your niche. You can create a theme for your photos. You can socialize, engage, comment, follow other people. You can create a hashtag that's branded right for your nonprofit or your event or your business and encourage others to use it. You can run a contest or team up with somebody else. Use Instagram stories and reels. Video, 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 video. <laughs> reels are Instagram's baby right now. That's what they're focusing on. I have a reel. If you go to my Instagram account and go to my reels, I have one that is almost 10,000 plays, which is my highest one. I do my reels for humor. I don't do them to promote the business directly. Uh, I, I use it for fun. But I'm just checking here right now. I have one. Oh, it's at 10K, 10.1K, where I looked earlier and it was like just under around 9,000. 10,000 10, plays, one reel. And my posts, so my regular Instagram posts, do not get that amount of views. I get like a couple hundred from Lucky. My stories don't get that many views. 
but I have a reel right now. My most recent one, 10.1K. And my highest one before that was 6,000. So reels really, really do help your reach, people finding you way more than my posts. But that's what they're doing because they've made reels, Instagrams focus for right now. Um, where was I? <laughs> Encourage followers to take an action. Ask them a question. Hey, comment below, or what do you think of this? We want them to like and share and comment. That helps the algorithm <laughs> by getting people to take some sort of action. Geotag your photos. So for me, I um, will add the location of Brantford. But if I have a client in Kitchener and I have posted about them, I would tag Kitchener in my location, especially for Instagram. As I'm, that's, how, that's what we're talking about. So be sure to add a location to all of your posts, um, whether it's just the city, the, the community you live in, or other cities that you're wanting your business to show up in. It doesn't have to just be where you're located. So if I really wanted to grow my business in, say, Simcoe, I could, would start you know, tagging Simcoe in it, not Brantford. Figure out what your audience likes. So look at your insights. Which ones do they really like? We have a client right now that um, we're really pushing their social media. You know, they're gearing up to their peak season. And we did a this or that type of post. And um, it did really well. And we could see that from the insights. So I can see which posts have done really well for, for this, for next month. Hey, let's do a couple more of those because those got a lot of engagement. They were fun. They still had to do with the business. And then which posts aren't, didn't do very well. Let's not do that type of post again, or how can we make it better? Link your Instagram account to other social media accounts. So use the link in bio. You can add an Instagram feed to your WordPress website. Make sure the icons are on your website. Maybe also put your icons in your email signature so that they click it. Same if you send out email newsletters, add in those social icons so that people can connect with you. I'll hurry. <laughs> Um, growing your Facebook page, right? So growing a Facebook page is a bit harder these days than, you know, five years ago. And that's why a lot of people gravitate towards Instagram because it is much easier to grow right now. You can invite users to like your page. I have a video of this on my um, Facebook and Instagram account of how to do that. Um, add a call to action to your posts. I will see people post <clears throat> um, like just some flowers and be like, look at these pretty flowers. What does that have to do with the business? Or what does that have to do? Like, what are you wanting them to do after they look at that post? We need some, some call to action. Use your page to tell a story. Uh, you could run Facebook ads, create viral content, post a giveaway, connect your Facebook to your website, just like with Instagram. Try Facebook lives, Instagram lives. That's still on my to-do list too. You can partner with an influencer or other community organizations, get tagged by other Facebook pages or users, use automation tools to boost your activity. So scheduling, you can add a Facebook like widget to your um, website, uh, include it in your email list, create more video. Video is huge, not only just for Instagram, but also Facebook. Gets more view ship, shares, and engage, same thing. Um, reply comment. If people are liking and commenting on your posts, appreciate that and comment back. We don't just post and walk away. If people are engaging with us, we need to engage back. So th this is clickable. Um, so this will be in the slides that will be sent out. I'll see if I can just copy the link address, but this blog post is not mine. It's something I found. She has all these Canva tips. So if you are still kind of new with Canva, um, there's all these things with Canva Pro that you can do, like take out the backgrounds and all that kind of stuff that um, gives you some advanced um, tools to make your social media or your marketing material in Canva look even better. Branding kit is huge for Canva. I use it all the time. Uh, the magic resize is really great. The remove background making a transparent background. A lot of these I use all the time. Locking elements, grouping elements, um, add comments or the notes, as I mentioned before, 
but that will also that is clickable in the PDF, which you will receive afterwards. So there's even more advanced things you can do with Canva um, to make your stuff even better. All right, so last little bit is if you are to hire someone or you're outsourcing your social media, here's some red flags or some questions to ask. And I have a similar post on my website, a blog post, where, but it's for web design. So if you're about to get a website, what questions to ask, what things to look for, do's and don'ts. So I'm going to be turning this into a blog post because I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Reports. If you are, um, you know, you have someone who is completely managing your social media, they're posting on your behalf, they're managing them mostly day to day, you should be receiving a report. Um, so for the clients that we have this month, early May, for that first week of May, I will be putting together my reports so I can prove to them how we did for their social for April, what posted really well and why, what posts didn't do really well and why, what recommendations we do for next month. Um, so I can actually prove that what they're paying for is doing a good job or not. <laughs> Hopefully you'd want the good job part. So you should be receiving a report. If you are not, why? Canva files and designs. So if we have an ongoing social media client, we'll make the designs and everything in their own Canva account. If it's just a one-off where we just do a month worth and then they post and because they just need help to, you know, figure out what to post and, you know, what it should look like. And basically we've created all these designs for them. We create those in our Canva, but then we share the file so that they can add it to their Canva account and do what they want with it moving forward. So we actually share all the things we design for people. So is that person going to share the designs for you? Are they going to make it in your own Canva? If not, why? Because you're paying for it. You should be able to keep those. You should be able to review what they're putting together, provide feedback, and then approve. You should know what is going to be posted, what it's going to look like, and, and when. Um, I do have people that come to me after they've used someone else and like, no, I never got to do that. What? So our clients get to review the social media ahead of time. They provide feedback like that, don't like this, or hey, can we tweak this? And then they say, yeah, it's all good. Then I post. Um, and the purpose of that is to make sure that it's in line with their business or their personality or their branding or their story. So it doesn't come off like they've outsourced it. We don't want it to scream, we've outsourced this. We want it to scream, it is still the business and it still speaks to them. So when people see it, they're like, oh, this is great. Not, this is not aligned. So make sure that you get to review and approve everything ahead of time. If not, once again, why? Um, ask to review accounts they're currently managing so that you can see what their style is and are they replying to things? Are they engaging? Definitely take a look at least their Instagram for the account they're managing and the Facebook page. And the reason for that is so if you're going to pay someone to help you with your social media, you should not see the exact same type of posts on Instagram and Facebook. The design, yeah. The image, yeah. We do use that across different platforms. But we tweak the content ever so slightly for those different accounts. Here's the reasoning. On an Instagram account or Instagram post, we cannot put um, a URL. It's not clickable. So why would we put a URL? That's where the whole link in bio thing comes in. If someone puts a URL in an Instagram post, it is not clickable, but we can put a URL, a call to action kind of thing on our Facebook post. And it is clickable. On Instagram, we can use hashtags. On Facebook, there is no purpose to it. It just, there's no purpose to it. Anyone who actually does marketing and is really good with social media knows that we're not using hashtags on Facebook. So if you see hashtags and usernames and it's just like the posts on Instagram, that person has posted on Instagram and just hit send to Facebook, which for people who are managing their own social media, I totally get it. Time is up the essence. But if you're paying someone to manage your social media and they're doing that, that's just pure laziness and you're paying for that. Um, and like LinkedIn, we can use hashtags, but they're not the same hashtags. Um, Twitter, we can use hashtags, not the same hashtags. So we tweak the content 
for each of the different profiles. So it's in line with that type of social media account. Okay, collaboration. So another thing you should be looking for is that it's um, collaborative so that you can provide feedback. You can provide images. You can say, hey, can we do this type of post? And the person takes it in. And you don't want to have to babysit them. The point of what we do for people, or if you hire, outsource, whatever that is, is that it's taking off that load off your shoulders um, and that you're not going, what's going on? When is it going to be posted? Like I haven't re I reviewed anything. There should be no babysitting. If you're having to babysit your social media person, whether it's a consultant, whether it's an agency, whether it's a team member or employee, um, that is the opposite of what we're supposed to do. It should feel like a weight has lifted off your shoulders. Um, time is now back in your calendar so that you can focus on other things to do with the business other than your social media. So just some tips and some questions to ask if you ever do hire or outsource your social media um, so that you, because you're paying for it to make, to make sure that you're getting someone who is legit. So we'll wrap it up. Uh, some trends and predictions for 2022 when it comes to social media. Social media emerges as a um, shopping platform. We've seen that we can integrate shopping into Facebook and Instagram, more short form video content. Um, we just keep hearing that video, video, video we have for a bit now. Social media becomes part of our daily life. It really is. Not only are we checking our emails when we wake up, we are checking our social media. Facebook remains on top for now. How uh, shorter attention spans result in bite-sized content. That's where the reels are just so popular because it's, what, a minute? And um, different reality options and growing and utilizing the user-generated content. Um, so uh, I don't have time to cover user-generated content today, but it's when other people use your hashtag or um, tag your account that you could possibly use that on your own social media. Um, it acts as like a review uh, and influence for people when it comes to that type of business. Okay, let's pull up for a couple of questions. If there is any, usually my social media stuff is like a two hour. <laughs> so I'm like, how do I cram this into 40 minutes or 45 minutes? So if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'll try to answer them right now or I'll add in the additional information for the replay. But hopefully you learned something that you at least need Canva, look at some scheduling tools. And then if you ever do hire or outsource that there's certain questions you definitely want to make sure that, um, like, do I get reports? How are you gonna make this in my Canva? Um, is this collaborative, that kind of thing. So if you do have any questions, throw them in the chat. I hope you learned something today. That is always my goal with my free webinars is that you learned something. You have some sort of takeaway. Maybe it's your next steps. Maybe it's something to look into. So hopefully you learned something. And feel free to connect with me. I am obviously on social media. So um, for Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> my username is Clarity Designs CA. And this will be sent out as a replay. So take, just keep an eye on that next 24 hours. If it's not in your inbox, check your spam or your junk. It definitely will be sent out to everybody. It'll be the replay and the presentation slides and also the chat, um, the chat that you can review. Okay, well, I will be here right till one for anyone who has an initial question or anything. Other than that, that does cover what I tried to squeeze in today. So thank you for everyone attending and I hope you have a good rest of your day.